session the next topic right now we are starting the session 8 but we have to continue with where we left on the session 7 right so we had left with the uh, with the pipes actually right pipes actually very important actually so pipe is basically it is used for okay communicating from the output of one process as an input for the second process like for example for example there is one command is there this is user space and this is a current space same thing user space and current space same thing so user space or user mode current mode now assume that there is a two commands are there like this two commands there are two commands are there or there are two processes are there if both these processes it want to communicate each other it can communicate <coughs> each other with the help of a pipe like this like this pipe symbol with the help of a pipe right so you know right in our keyboard we have this symbol pipe right we have the symbol right pipe symbol like this pipe symbol is there right so like for example simple example like for example i want to execute the psef command or psax command so what i will do i will execute the ps hyphen ax command so ps is a command with a is all x is execute i need to see all the processes which is running in my system so i'll execute the command ps space hyphen ax and say enter so it will show me all the processes which are running in my system correct <coughs> it is showing me all the processes running in the system but here you could see that actually i want to see my the output of the psx from here it's a beginning so what i have to do that i have to use a scroll up like this i have to do scroll up or in your uh, keyboard you have a page up actually shift page up actually shift page up see shift page up will take you the it will take you to the prompt where you have executed the command when you where you have executed the command so you you could see that the output of this command is so enormous that it cannot fit into the single screen actually so that's the reason it is showing you the end part of the output of the command now you say that rajesh i want to display in the page wise manner or i want to display from the beginning itself so what you have to do that you have to do the command ps space at ax pipe it to less your less command will always show you in a page wise manner either you can use a less command or even you can use a more command any command you can use like this so less command will always show the page wise manner if i say ps at ax pipe it to less and say enter this is the pipe symbol actually and enter you could see that you are able to see the output from the beginning itself and you can use a down arrow mark in your keyboard to navigate towards down mode and the up arrow to navigate towards up mode see you can navigate anywhere within output by using a down arrow or up arrow mark key what is there in your keyboard right so here what is happening is that you have execute the psex and then the second command what is executed is a less less command less command will show the output in a page wise manner and ps hyphen x will show you the complete process running in linux machine or in the linux server correct now what pipe is doing here there now the pipe if you are using this pipe symbol so here i execute this pipe symbol correct i use this pipe symbol correct so i am using a pipe symbol why pipe we are using actually so if you are using this pipe symbol enter in the kernel space how it happens right it will create a pipe like this actually sorry so it will create a pipe symbol like this it literally it will create a pipe like this actually it will create a pipe like this this pipe we call it as a pipe buffer 
the file paper buffer memory he says and the size is 8192 bytes or it must it is that about 8 kilobytes approximately 8k bytes 8 kilobytes so this pipe we call it as a right end of the pipe this we call it as a read end of the pipe read end of the pipe now what literally happens that whenever the ps command ps fnf is executed by default whenever any command is executed where the output should go it should show it the output should come to the screen or the monitor right or it should come to the terminal right the output should come to the terminal right or or the screen right or wherever the file descriptor is one one is what standard output right so that's what we discussed one is that but the standard output standard output right one standard output here the output should come it is a screen should come but that is not the output is not coming to the screen it is actually the output is actually going inside the pipe here like this inside the pipe so what happened that whatever the command you are executing right instead of the output is coming to the screen the whole output will be written into the right end of the pipe it will be written into the right end of the pipe right it will turn into the right end of the pipe like this so all the output will be written into the right end of the pipe like this so whatever the psx key is there right the data will be stored in this pipe like this, like this. right okay now it has written right end of the pipe fine so the all the data is it is there in the pipe so please see that actually this pipe where it is generated is generated in the kernel space not in user space okay now what is happening now once you have written it actually now there is one more command is a less command basically whenever you are executing ls command ls command less command will always expect the input from the keyboard but here in this case less command is waiting from the read end of the pipe actually means here or from here it is actually it want to read it actually it means that this less process will try to read from the read end of the pipe like this it will read from the read end of the pipe so that's what what happened right the output of first command will be given as an input for the second command via the pipe he said so how we said why pipe is used you have to say sir the output of the first command is given as an input for the second command via the pipe that's what pipes are used so pipes are basically used as filters actually we call it as a filters it filters the data actually the way the user required you can use as a filter actually so it means that you are trying to do a intercommunication between two different processes so we can communicate like this if two different process it want to communicate each other it means that one output of one command you have to feed as an input to the second command then you have to use pipes sir. and pipes are heavily used in our day to day activity right we use this pipes heavily because the way a user required or re, the way user requires uh, the output he will use lot of pipes it is used for some filtering option right so now what is happening that as soon as the second process is number less command it reads the data it finishes the data or if this process get exited is if this process get killed right right automatically even the pipe which is there it will also get killed actually it is just like a memory space which is been created in the kernel mode or in the kernel space and that memory space is number 8192 bytes and it acts like a circular buffer that's what we call this as a pipe symbol so so it means that rajesh when i'm using this pipe symbol does this pipe will get created in the kernel space yes it will get created in the kernel space each and every pipe will have two ends right end of the pipe read end of the pipe right end of the pipe is a is a is a place where the first process or the first command output will be stored here read end of the pipe is the place where the second process will read the data from this read end of the pipe in that way you are able to achieve the inter process communication between two different commands so either you can use the pipe symbol like this psx pipe to pipe to less and say enter see you can see or else what is happening for example for example you have an alice pipe so i say cat alice now you say rajesh i want the line number to be displayed i can say cat 
Alice, pipe it to NL. See, line number. Okay. What you're doing? What NL is doing? NL is expecting some input. So where it's getting input? It is getting actual input from the cat, Alice. Okay. The output is not coming to the screen. The output is actually written to this pipe symbol or to this pipe. From, it, it means that the output of the Alice will has written to the right end of the pipe. And from the right end of the pipe, the input is taken care of by the NL command and NL will show in a, in a line number. Exactly. So you understood, right? What is a pipes used? Pipes is used for doing the communication between two different commands or it is used as a filter or communication between two different process. So here, if you can ask Rajesh, whenever you are executing these two commands, Alice, cat Alice and NL, does these two processes are getting created by the system or by the kernel? Yes. These, there are two processes which are created for execution of these two commands. So whenever you want to do inter-process communication between two different process or two different commands, you need a pipe actually. So either you can use this symbol, okay, for creating a pipe, or else you have a command which is nkfifo, 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 my fifo. Oh, it's already generated. It's already exists at that time only exit, right? See, my fifo is there. So this also act like a FIFO file. If I do the file command on my FIFO, you could see that it is showing as a named file. It means that it is a pipe file. Now, how we can do it? Like for example, if I use a echo, hello everyone, read that, that output to the my FIFO. See, you are actually writing a data to the my FIFO file. You can go to the other terminal like this. So already written the data, it is there in the FIFO file. Now you can read the data like this. Cat of less than of my people. You are able to read. So in one terminal, you are trying to write some data into the FIFO file, which is a pipe file only. In the other terminal, you are reading the data. So in this way, you are actually achieving a communication between one process to other process. Or else you can use the symbol. Like for example, PSAX, pipe it to less, like this. Anything. See, you are doing the input. So in this way, by using pipes, uh, we are able to achieve some kind of a filtering actually. Some kind of a filtering we are able to achieve. It. Is it clear, guys? Clear. Any doubts you have, let me know. Are you able to understand what is pipe by looking into the symbol? Yes? Okay. Okay, so that is what the pipe and the, to create a pipe file, you know that I use a mkp4 command. So this is the fifo command, mk is a command in Linux which we create for the pipes actually. Okay, fine. mksoc is the next one for the socket one. This is for the socket one. So here for fifo, mk fifo is used. For the soft link, we use a ln with a hyphen s option. For the hard link, I use ln command. Okay. For the socket file, basically I use mksoc, but that command is not there. I think it is obsolete or they're not using. mksoc basically it used to communicate with two different process running in a two different machine. Suppose there are two machines are there, there, there are two servers are there. This is one server, which is running in, this is a one server and this is another server actually. If in this two server, there are two different processes are running like this, assume that this is nothing but this is a server process or some server program is running and here some client program is running. If these two processors, if it want to communicate each other, then it needs a socket file like this. A socket file has to get created. So with the help of the socket file only, what happened? The communication will happen between two different machines with the help of a socket file. So socket as are always required and sockets always work with the PCP IP or UDP protocol. Either anyone will be used to communication between two different process running a two different machine. This process will be act like a client and this process will be act like a server. Like for example, classical example, what we say for the server, we can have here web server running. Here some client program is running. So whenever this client program, it wants to communicate with the web server, which is running in the web, uh, which is which is the, which is running some other machine. If they want to send the data to them, then what happens? A socket is required here. 
a socket file is required. So internally, what happened, right? Some kind of a socket file will get created, and with the help of an mksoft command, okay, the socket files are getting created. Okay. Now, next is nothing but the character device file, block device file. These are very very important files. So this, by using a mksoft command, we are able to create a character device file or a block device file. Where it is used actually for us, it is really not required to understand. Uh, not MK software, it is a MK Nord. I'm sorry, MK Nord command. By using MK Nord command, I am able to create a character device for a block device. I don't think so that we will be ever be using this command in our life, but still, okay, for a knowledge purpose, we should have a, some knowledge on what is this type. So, there are seven types of files are there. Okay, if I'm understanding all this type of file, let me even understand the character device for block device file also, right? Even though, <coughs> okay. We might not use <coughs> this file, but still, okay, fine. We will learn what is it, right? So, then character device file or the block device file, what will happen that this is a special type of file, one type of file, where actually you your application, it can actually communicate with any of the devices. Like, for example, like, for example, simple that this is the user space, same thing, uh, okay. Say, after some point of time, this will all go off. User space and this is a current space. Now only I'm saying so going forward, we will not touch all these things. Now suppose assume that actually here a user has logged in. Rajesh has logged in. Okay. So Rajesh has logged in here. And Rajesh has got his own shell. Yeah, we know very well that he has his own shell. So this is a bash shell we got. Fine, that's fine. Okay. So here what happened? Here in the kernel space, kernel is running, right? Right. Kernel is running. Now what happened, right? Assume that actually Rajesh is Rajesh. What happened, right? There is some process is there which is running in within this uh, within the uh, Rajesh user account, right? This this process or this is like an application actually which is running, and this application sir, it want to communicate with the the it want to communicate with some printer. So there's a hardware was a printer actually. So printer hardware is there. Printer is a hardware machine where it will print the it will print the it will print right. If you, whenever you want to give any printing operation right, you will do some you will execute some um, means you will execute some instruction where the printer will start working. But how exactly the printer will work actually? Basically, Rajesh is running in some application. So in his application, how he does right? He will use some kind of a special device character device file like something like slash base slash sttty0 like this will be so what will happen right how it happens that actually here when he is calling this device file this is basically a character device file actually. it's a character device file please don't uh no don't get confused or don't get in some kind of a confusion fit just listen what i'm saying if you're not able to understand very clearly is also fine i'm, I'm not really bothered if you're not able to understand it okay just try to listen what i'm saying so now you are having an application where you are opening that application and you're calling this some special device file slash the s tty0 something in the kernel space in the kernel space you know kernel is nothing but it has many system like file management memory management process management network management device management yes device management is a place where exactly your all your device devices is running Okay, now when uh, when a user is actually using this slash ttty, so this is a special character device file. Always the character device files are identified by two important things. One is nothing but one is a major number and other is a minor number. Don't worry about all these things. Major number and one is a minor number. Major number and minor number. Now what happened? Right when this application it tried to communicate to the kernel. It means that basically here what happened, right? There is some printer driver is running. Some printer driver is running here. Driver is running. Or the printer driver is running. Or the printer driver or the device driver is up and running like this. Now what happened when an application is actually using this device file, slash the which is which is having a major number, a minor number, Assume that the major number is four. The major number is something four. And the minor number is something like a 10. Don't worry about all this. What is major number and minor number? We'll see. The major number is four, one is a 10. 
this printer device it is registered with the kernel with the major number 4 now when i am using this device file what exactly happens you know the communication will happen from your application to your kernel from your kernel the communication will happen with your printer driver because the printer driver is registered with the four register number because this device file is also having a major number four exactly what happened your application will start communicating with your printer driver and from your printer driver what happened the device driver printer will actually communicate with your printer device now this printer device will do some operation means it does some printing operation so whatever operation you are given to do it it will try to do it this is how it happens sir it means that you say rajesh whenever there is any application is there if that application if it wants to communicate with any of the driver any of the driver does it needs this special character device file or the block device file yes it needs it needs without a special character device file or the block device file it cannot communicate with the kernel oh okay okay fine oh it means that the application should have the information about this character device file card one classical example sir now for example now you are executing so many task over here right i am executing ls command wait command who command right now you are getting all the output on screen of the monitor what is this screen sir this is nothing but your terminal driver sir this is nothing but your terminal device or nothing but this is nothing but your led device this is nothing but led device correct this is nothing but led you are nothing but your screen it's a screen device so basically the screen device is nothing but it is a serial port itself it's a serial driver now what is happening is that actually now whenever your your terminal or a user he want to whenever a user okay whenever a user he want to come suppose you have logged into the bash right you are logged into the bash and here what is happening you are sitting over here in the user space here in the bash command you are actually executing some commands like this oh ls date like this you are getting the output to the screen right how exactly the communication happen basically what happen right this application right in turn it will call a special character device file what is a special character device file it will call the special character device file slash dev slash pps slash 0 okay so what is the what is the major or minor number of the slash dev slash pt0 can you see it lsfl slash dev pts slash 0 major number is 136 minor number is 0 okay major number is 136 136 minor number is 0 okay it is something like this this is a major this is minor number okay fine so in your kernel within the kernel there is a driver that driver is nothing but your what is up in that this is called as a terminal driver it is running there is a terminal driver device driver which is running in your kernel space this terminal driver is registered with your kernel with the help of a major number 136 now whenever you are executing in i am executing i am sitting over here i am executing ls command get command who command pwd command so many commands i am executing you are all the output you are getting into the screen itself this screen is nothing but a terminal sir okay now what happens that whenever user is executing in turn all these commands is actually referring to this terminal sir so it is it means that actually you are actually communicating with your with the special character device file which is the slash dash slash pt0 now what happened this just from when you are communicating how the control goes it will go to your terminal driver which is running in the kernel from the terminal driver it is going to your screen actually like this the communication is happening okay it means that rajesh what you are trying to tell me is that whatever the communication a user is doing on any application does it needs to interact with some kind of a driver oh, yes sir okay if it is a special purpose oh it has to communicate so rajesh suppose like i plug in some usb device i plug in some usb device in my system so usb device is also there is usb also required some major or minor, minor number the application needs yes sir it needs that okay fine so it means that for any kind of a device let it be character device file or a block device file like similarly what is happening that your hard disk right the hard disk see if i execute f disk hyphen l command it will show you all the partition can you see there is a slash dash slash xvda2 
okay this is that put your slash partition so there is a hard disk in your system this is a hard disk it's in your system which calls a hdd hard disk so this hard disk is having some partitions like this actually partition and this partition in a system by the kernel it is identified with the name slash dev slash x v d a 2 see it is an x v d a so slash dev x v d a 2 okay so the slash dev x v d a 2 it is not but it's a character device file so if you if you say ls f n l slash dev x v x v d a 2 can you see sir it is a block device file oh it means that rajesh whenever i am communicating to a file because the file is stored in the disk does it uses this block device file to communicate to the hard disk driver yes sir it uses the block device file so character device files please try to understand character device files are used to communicate with the character devices with the character device with character devices so character devices are something like a printer a scanner you are a terminal there are many devices are there which are the character device driver similarly for the block devices actually you have a block device files block device files so block device files are used to communicate with your block drive or with your block devices so block devices are hard disk cd rom floppies blah 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 so many things which are having a disk right those are number block so so those two special types of files are there in under the slash dev see under slash dev lsfnl file to put crap cap c see all these are kind of so see these are terminals tty1 tty2 tty3 tty4 t5 like that you have all categories of files similarly you have a lsfnl pipe ls hyphen l pipe to grab cap b see these are block device files see these are block device files. am i clear sir on this i know for some of you you might not completely understand what is what i'm trying to tell but you have to just understand that that there is a special type which uh, special type of file which we call the character device and the block device file those files can be created by mk or this character device files or a block device are the files which are used to communicate with the drivers and those driver are with what device drivers which are running in the kernel space or which are part of the kernel only like that only you have to understand not more than that clear sir so we might not use this anywhere in our laptop maybe you if you go to some embedded company or if you go to some kind of a product based company where they are dealing with the device drivers and all yes then you have to know all these things otherwise it is not really required clear sir so now whenever i want to create any character device file or the block device i have to say mkdot command okay my cat okay major number is 100 minor number is 10 okay because it's a character device file you have to say mk not i think c should come at least or else it should come here mk not uh mk not space c it's a character device file major number 100 minor number 10 and specify my cat or else mk not my cap c major number 100 minor number 10 see it has created a file by name my cap see it has a major number 100 minor number 10 similarly i can create a mk not my block b is a block device file major number 200 minor number 100 whatever see let us open it see block device file like this also you can create a file so this is a command to create a file mk not my block b for the block device file and mk not my cat c for the character device file clear sir so with this we have completed all the seven types of files so if anyone ask you you will be able to tell aram sir right correct right so we had okay. yes sir yes yes not so <clears throat> now so what are the things we are going to see now so we will continue with the command itself now it's very important that we all should have very good knowledge on commands right so get back we'll go back to the command itself right 
So firstly, we executed that ls command, right? Ls command we executed, right? Ls command we had executed, right? We executed ls hyphen l long listing, right? So we had executed about the ls hyphen l long listing. It will give more information, right? Ls hyphen i will give all the i known numbers for the file. Ls hyphen capital F, ls hyphen capital F, so the capital F. It will also display, but it will tell you the type of file. It will give some information what type of file it is with the help of some special symbol, right? So that's what. Now here, what happened? That as I said, right? LS has an option as well as it has an argument also. Like for example, whatever I'm doing, LS hyphen I, LS hyphen F, LS hyphen P, uh, LS hyphen L, everything is actually executing the current working directory for the current working directory. Like for example, say Rajesh, LS hyphen L, I want to check in the slash temp directory. What it does? See here, you are giving the information about the path. So saying that no, I don't want to work in a. I don't want the output of my work present working directory. I want to get the output from some other directory. So then, in that case, you need to mention the mention the path information about which folder you want to list or which folder you want to do a long list in this case. So that's what the syntax is. What we have discussed the syntax is command, option, and the argument. And one of the argument will be a path information or a file information, right? So always, this is the syntax. Sir. Now there are so many commands are there in Linux actually, right? So if I want to get what is the information about that particular what what that command does? Suppose ls, I don't know what is the letter. I say what is ls? See, it will give one line information about okay, it list all the directories of the content, right? What is pwd? See, it will print the name of the current working directory like this. It will give a one line information about that command. Okay. Now in Linux, sir, what happened, right? Whenever you want to get the thorough information about any kind of a command, always you have to go with the manual pages, sir. And to get it, you have to execute a command man. Man space specify the command in, command. If you say man space ls, it will be it will take you to the manual information about that command. So you could see that it there are a lot of things are there. Whenever you say man ls. Or man and specify any command name. It has a various different section. One is a name. It will tell you that what that command does. And second is synopsis. Means synopsis means how to use that command. So have ls option and the file. So this is the synopsis or this is the syntax actually. And they will give a description about the command, what that command does, or what that command is used for. As well as they will give you all the options. Like you could see that actually, these are the options here. So many of these options are carried forward from the traditional Unix only, right? It has been carried forward. See, hyphen i, i know number. Print the index number of each file, i know number. If you come down, down of the command, so they will give some summary report also. They will also tell you that who's the author of that command. Say Richard Stallman and David McKenzie. These are the two people who designed that ls command. Okay, they will give the copyright information. Okay, GPL licensing, GPL general public licensing. And you could go with the full documentation of the command with the core routines of the LS. You will also get the information about like that. You will get to know about many information. Okay. Right. They'll get to many information. And also here, some people might have found some bugs and all. So they have, the, you can report the bugs. If you're finding any uh, bugs in your, uh, in that command, no, you can report it to your actually. And they will resolve that bug. And they'll also mention your name and email address. that this is a particular so-and-so person has found that bug actually. So that's how it is. So this is a very good uh, manual page. So always make a habit of reading a man page. So now whenever you open a man page, actually, it will get open. But if you want to come out from it, can you see here? It is saying the Q for quit. Just press the Q button. It will quit from outside. It means that you are you are coming out from the man page. So either you can use a man ls or there is a command info ls. Info also will give you more information than the man command. So man will give you, but info will give elaborate information about that command. So this is a lot, a lot of things are there. They'll elaborately give this actually, right? So this has a more information than a man. So a lot of people will go with the info page or else they, they people for a quick reference, they'll go for the man page. So whenever I want to come out from this, I have to say shift to colon Q and say enter. See, you come out from the info page. Okay, sir. So that's all. But this manual page section, no, sir. I just want to give some more extra information. This manual page, it is not one section of the manual page. See, whenever you say man ls, can you see it is showing ls command, but you could see there's a bracket one is there. Oh, what is this? 
oh this is this is the first section of the manual pressure okay fine like how many sections are there like that so there are total nine sections are there sir if you say man man see if you come down you are seeing a manual page of the man if you see see can you see there are nine sections are there the first section is always for executable program or executable command shell command the second is for a system call this function brought by the kernel the third is for a libraries fourth is for special files like see device files fifth is for file formats and configuration sixth is for games like that and the ninth is for your kernel functions kernel api or kernel commands so these are the nine manual page sections but as a devops engineer we will never go with any of the other only we will always try to see only this one thing to show an example of system call suppose in that let me show you an example man two of open or man three of open oh what happened man oh okay, okay. because uh, this is a limited thing uh, i have to install all the patches everything that's what you are not able to see second page manual page and third manual page section right i have to install the packages sir. then only i will get it because here limited installation has happened limited only the packages are installed that's the reason i will not be able to show the man page of this but if you go to man to open or man to write man to uh, read if you give right it will open you the system called okay so or else you can go here also like this in google you can go here you can say that man to of open see check second page of the manual section see like this this is the man open free hc this is the synopsis see these are all header files so this is the so it will give the elaborate so open system opens a file this is where the path like this you will give it is a very big elaborate man page of the open system called like this so second man page is for system call first man page is only for command so we don't need to get into other man page just for information i'm saying that there are nine manual page sections okay now after that what happened right you have a date command date will show the current time and date it's very important so it will show the current time and date if i execute date with a hyphen capital i option so it will show a year month and a day in this format it shows actually date with a hyphen capital i suppose you say rajesh i want to only when they print the year i don't know anything you can say date plus uh, percentage y see it will show you i want only month uh, m i want only day like this like that it will show you actually whatever the way you require right in that format it will show you like that actually okay so after that you want to check the calendar of this month it will show calendar like this actually or if you say cal of minus 3 it will show the previous month the next month and the present month like that it will show you the calendar actually okay guys it will show the calendar after that you have pwd it will show the always it will show the current working directory suppose if i go to this part slash osr hrc slash osr hrc and the ls see? again i'll go to the kernel ls see again i'll go to this this one ls see i'll go here i'll go to the include line x see when i execute the pwd include linux what happened when oh. i execute pwd see i am into this path see slash user src kernel 4.8 include linux oh i am into this path okay so pwd if you execute the command it will show you the current working directory okay so it will show current working like that now if i do a cd and enter always cd and enter if you don't know it will always take you to the home directory only always wherever you are you want to go to your home directory you have to just say cd and enter it will take you to the current working directory you can toggle between your and if you say cd hyphen it will take back to the previous directory where you were there see it will take back to me the to the same location where i was previously so cd hyphen will always be toggling between the two directory change actually like this if it is a cd enter it will come back here if it is a cd hyphen it will to go back to the previous directory where you were actually like that cd hyphen will take back to the previous directory where were you present at the last time actually like that okay so date is over cal is over pwd is over fine now so these are some few commands actually okay now what we will see there are some few important commands are there which we have to know in linux sir. okay what are those commands like for example for example you need to know about the tar command how to create a tar ball you need to even know about the zip command how to zip it and zip it and everything fine and also you should know about like uh, there are some few commands are the cd command okay uh, move command 
what are the other command move command okay sorry move command and what else uh, cp command move command mkdr we already know to create a directory this we know and of course we need to know about the t command we need to know about the tar tr command we need to know about the find command we need to know about the grep command we need to know about the set command we need to know about the off command you need to know some command as a free command what is free you need to know about the fdis command and you need to know about the uh, mount command okay you need to know about uh, about uh, uh, df command you need to go about the du command so these are some of the few commands which you should always be there in your tip of your hands or tip of your finger fingers whenever you are working in a system clear sir so shall we go with all this command sir it is interesting to understand right correct right so some commands are very important we will see it actually because uh, you will appreciate it actually so one is that actually so now assume that let me do one thing sir let me i have a raju directory let me inside i'll be inside a raju directory what i will do i'll say cp hyphen rb etc the whole etc out uh, here i'll copy it to i'll try to copy over here and copy it here actually so i have an etc directory contain suppose you say that now i want to check what is the size of this etc directory see i have a du command so if i execute the command du hyphen hs specify the directory name it will show me that it is a 24 mb so du command is disk usage command hyphen h means human representation s means summary suppose if you don't use s actually if you said du hyphen h etc okay, it will show me individual file inside it what is each and every cell you will say rajesh i don't want all this output man i want only the last output which is number i want to know the complete size then you execute du with a hyphen h s means summary specify the summary of the complete will show you 24 mb now you say that rajesh i want to create a tarball so what is the tarball tarball in linux is number it is a collection of files and directories or it is number it is an archive we say collection of files and directories so if i execute a command tar i want to create tarball what else i'll say tar hyphen cvf c means create v means verbos f means file so you are creating a tarball with what name with some name like for example we say uh, naresh dot tar i'm just saying and what is the file name or directory you have to give you have to get give the name etc and say enter see what it does if you do an ls you could see that it is created a naresh tarball actually so i'll show the command tar hyphen cvf naresh dot tar so this is a destination name you are giving you can give any name i'm just choosing some name naresh dot tar and what is the source the source is etc directory so this complete directory which will be which will be created inside this tarball actually so what is this tarball content this tarball content etc directory so what is it is it's a directory so all the tarball is but it contains a collection of all the files and directories it or it is an archive it's a collection of all the files and directories right so now you have created the naresh dot tar now if you see the size of the naresh dot tar it is just it is just 23 mb now it, it is not a compressed form actually it is not a compressed form now suppose i remove this etc directory sir i will remove this etc directory rm rf etc directory i am removing that file etc directory right now i have this tarball naresh dot tar now suppose you say rajesh i don't i want to view the content of this naresh dot tar so i'll say that tar hyphen tvf naresh dot tar t stands for view so viewing the content of the tarball see and say enter see it is showing that that these are all the contents which are there within the tarball okay now that is one thing tvf will show you the content of the tarball now you say okay fine rajesh now you have given me the tarball i want to extract the complete tarball how to extract it as a tar hyphen xvf naresh dot tar enter now you say ls can you see that it has extracted the tarball the content the extraction is it is etc right so whenever you want to extract any tarball you should always use a xvf extracting the tarball fine but you could see that actually when i have a tarball this tarball is not a complete compressor if you check the size of both 
If you check the size, like view one at a star, see, almost just one MB is a difference, but this is not the compressed one. It is just an archive. It's just a collection. Now what happened? You need to compress it. There are two methods of compressing that. One is a gzip actually, gzip2, gzip, and specify the rest.r. Okay, enter. You could see that it has applied a zip on it. Now you check the size of the rest.r. See, now it is showing 670. So this is one method of compressing the tarball. One is a zip format. Now you say that Rajesh, I want to extract this narrage.gz actually. So I'll remove again this etc directory. I'll remove etc directory. I can even run this with the help of a tar if an XVF only I can do. It will also extract the narrage.tar non gz. See, I am able to extract it. Okay. Or if you say Rajesh, I don't want, I want only the tar ball man. I don't want this D zip and all. I don't want this actually. So no problem. You will say D unzip. Specify the rest dot tar dot zip. Now it has come back to the rest dot tar. Now there is a second method is there? B zip two. Uh, B zip two. I think it is not there, sir. Yum install B zip two. Yes, you are installing the B zip two. Now B zip two is installed. Now if I say B zip two, specify the dot tar. So I say ls. See, can you see the extension now? Earlier it was gz. See, so I use use the command gz to zip it. Right now I'm using B zip two. Now can you check the size of the narration now? Earlier the B zip was showing six MB. It is showing 4.6 MB. Oh, it means that B zip 2 has a more compression ratio than the G zip actually. Correct. So now you have zipped it by using B zip 2. Now I'll remove the CTC directory. Right. I can even extract the uh, knowledge data dot B zip 2 with the same XVF itself. It will work actually. No problem. See, it has extracted it. And say that. See, it has been extracted. Correct. Now you say, uh, Rajesh, I don't want this B zip 2 now. I'll say B. Unzip to see unzip to narrate dot tar. Now you could see that that bzip to extension you have removed. It. See how we can remove this extension by running a b unzip to or bun zip to or b unzip to right. So I'll say tar hyphen xvf normal with the narrate dot tar. Now you will say Rajesh, I want to apply a zip. I don't want to be zip, zip to, I want to only apply zip. You can say zip. Okay, zip, we can say zip, Naresh, sorry, etc. You have to say that uh, etc dot uh, zip and say etc. You have created a zip file. Can you check the size of the zip file now? Oh, it is four kilomines. The zip is having, the zip is actually compressing more than bzip or gzip. So that's the reason people will always go with the Z, B zip only. Uh, zip only. So I'll remove this ETC just to make sure that. Now you are having a G, uh, ETC zip actually. To, G, uh, to unzip it, you say unzip and set, specify ETC dot zip. See, now you have got back to your data. Clear, sir? How to use zip and unzip? How to use B zip 2 and G zip 2? Right? G zip, right? So you can use any of this compression method, but the main thing is actually you are applying everything to the tar ball, or else you can even directly create without the tar ball also directly you can zip it. That is also possible. How to do it? Like for example, let me remove this narrage.zip. Narrage .zip. Now if you see the file type of this narrage.tar, see it's a POSIX tar archive. Okay, you check the file type of etc.zip. What is it? Oh, it's a zip archive, sir. So this file command will tell you the file types. So now I'll remove this narrage.tar and etc.zip, I'll remove it. Now you see that Rajesh, I have a folder etc. I want to directly do it when I don't want to create a tar and then do zip it and all. So I can still use actually tar hyphen zx zcvf etc.tar 
all three z and etc it has created a zip directly so z is for gz again you want to exert it tar hyphen z xvf extract etc dot tar dot z see it got extracted Got it. The size of etc dot tar dot z. It is four. Yes, you can do this way only. So like this, you are compressing more. You are doing more compression actually. Okay, clear, sir. So this is very important command because we will be using the star ball and untarring, tarring every day in our day to day activity at our at our at our workplaces, right? So we'll be using those commands at our workplaces. Okay. Fine, sir. Now, what else you have? You have a df command. This diff command will give you a disk-free usage. Actually, disk-free means basically how many uh, you know like partitions are there or how many file systems are there which are up and running in your system. Okay. What is the size of each and every partition? What is the use percentage and where is the mount point? If you need to get all the information, you will get through with the help of a df command. Okay. Before the DF, if you do the mount command, it will show you all the file systems which are mounted in your system. See, it will show you all the file systems which are mounted in your system. So it is very important command mount command. If you do it, you'll get to know all the file systems are mounted. Okay. Or else you can use the command. Uh, you can use a DF H command. So DF H command will show you the mounted file system. See, slash the XVA do it has been mounted to the slash partition. It's mounted to the slash partition. The use percentage is 34 percentage. Available is 6.7 GB. Use is 3.4 GB and 10 GB is the size of this file system. Like this, it will show you. So you could see that in your company, if you do df edge, it will show you a lot of file system which has been mounted in your system. Like that will show you. Okay, like that. So f this <coughs> f this command f this command will show you the will show the disk information like uh, for example in your hard in your system so there will be a hard disk if it is of a type slash the xvda and it is a 10 gb so many number of bytes so many number of sectors and everything here it will show the partition information right so this xvda one it is a bio it's a boot prompt actually that's a boot prompt and this is nothing but your your, your slash partition actually even you can mount it the slash partition anywhere like for example i want to mount it see when you execute the mount command see slash there xvda2 it is mounted to the slash partition and the type is not what xf files xfs file system you will say rajesh can i again mount it to somewhere else yeah you can mount it sir you can say mount space mount space slash there xvda2 to slash opt you are able to mount it. When I execute the df h command, see xvd has been mounted to slash, but if you execute the mount command, see xvda is also mounted to the slash opt. So if I go to the cd to slash opt and say ls, can you see all your file system which has been mounted? See, it has been mounted. You can go to your root also like this, where you have seen so many files you have created. See, where is the path? See, slash opt root. You are able to see all your files which has been mounted, right? So you can mount like that with the help of a. And whenever you want to unmount it, say unmount, you mount it slash opt. It will get unmounted. Okay, so like that. Now, zip cp cp command and all you know, right? Very well. Cp copy file. Uh, okay, copy the file. Uh, one more thing, sir. I missed to tell you uh, one thing that actually, so whenever you have a tarball, actually, whenever you have a tarball, whenever you extract, suppose this is the extracting, you are extracting it here, right? When I do a tar hyphen zx vf specify etc dot tar dot tar, it is getting extracted here itself. Suppose you say that no, I don't want to extract here, I want to extract somewhere else. So you have to see this and you have to give hyphen capital C option, say slash home slash grease. Oh, I want to extract there, man. It will go and extract it there. See, if if you switch to the Grish user, ls, see, it is extracted here. So whenever you want to extract to some other path, then you have to use hyphen capital C option. This is also very important. 
<coughs> while working in the system, you have to specify hyphen capital C option whenever you are extracting into some other location. Okay. So what about the other commands? Very important commands. Okay. So I'll exit out from it. So CP command, simple sir. Like whenever you want to copy any file, right? And you know, whenever you want to copy any file to any other location, right? You will use a CP command actually. Basically, suppose assume that actually I have a Alice file. I want to copy this Alice file under the Raju directory. I'll say CP Alice file Raju directory. Under the Raju directory, I'm copying it actually. So if you go to the Raju directory, you could see that the Alice file is getting copied over there. So whenever you're copying a file, you can just use the CP command. Suppose I want to copy a directory under the Raju. I want to copy the Satya directory under the Raju. You have to say CP hyphen R Satya and then say Raju. So this is a source file, this is a source path, and this is a destination path. So you're trying to copy the whole directory under the Raju. Then on that case, you have to use a hyphen R option. So get inside the Raju. So you know that actually the Satya directory has been copied over inside. Right. Similarly, what happened that you are using a move command. Move command means literally moving the file from one location to another location. You say that Rajesh, I want to move this ABC directory inside the Raju directory. So you'll say move MB ABC directory to the Raju directory. So you're literally moving it, not copying it. Now you could see that ABC file is not a directory is not here. It has got inside the Raju directory. See? It is there inside the Raju directory ABC. So like that move will we'll be using. And many times what happened, you will always be using a recursive method, recursive option actually. So whenever I'm copying, suppose I want to move this Abhinav file into the Raju directory, I'll say move command Abhinav to the Raju directory, right? But when you are moving it, you will not get to know whether it's moving or not. How I know? So I'll say move hyphen V means you are moving the, uh, the, you know, the B1 directory under the Raju directory. It will show you in a verbose mode actually. I said, oh, it is getting moved actually. It is getting renamed or it is getting moved like this. You can use a move or you can use a rename also. Both are same. Move will be used to move a file from one location to another location. Move is also used to rename a file also. Suppose you say that, Rajesh, I have file one. I want to rename the as a file two. You can say MV file one to file two. You are renaming the file actually. See, earlier it was a file one. Now it is a file two. Like this. Okay, guys. So in uh, Linux or in Unix, okay, we have a command to say echo command, sir. Echo command will print whatever the string you pass, right, to the standard output or to the screen. If I say echo, hello everyone, it is always better. You should always put in a double quotes whenever you are mentioning in the echo command. So if I say echo, hello everyone, so whatever the string which you are passing the echo, it will always print to the standard output or to the screen. Right. So here in this case, it is actually printing this thing to the standard screen. So it is same thing like what we have printf in C right? So whenever you want to print any string, you use a printf in C program. Similarly, whenever you want to print any kind of a string to the to your screen, right? You have to always use an echo command. So echo command will always try to try to print a string. And echo command is also used to create a file also. That's what I said. If I use echo greater than my file one, see, it will create a file by name my file one. So with the help of echo, you can even create a file also. Okay. So now, what is happening? That suppose if we say, Rajesh, I have an echo. Something I have the string red hat Linux. If I say echo red hat Linux, you could see that red hat Linux is printed to the screen of the monitor. But you say, Rajesh, I want to print these three different words in three different lines. I will say echo. Same command, echo red hat Linux. But I will use a new line option like this. So whenever you're using any kind of a new line option or any escape characters, you should always use a hyphen E option. See, now it will be printed the three words will be printed three different. Here you could see that is making some space. You want to remove that spaces, so you can use a blank space like this. So you're removing the blank space. Now you could see it has got a line. So whenever you are using any kind of a escape characters. Always you have to use hyphen E option along with the echo command. Is it clear, guys? Similarly, I have a printf command also. I can use the same thing printf hello everyone. Like this. I can even use a printf command also. Echo and printf are 
both work the same thing but using a printf you can achieve some kind of a standard output some kind of a designing output you can get to the printf i'll show you when i'm writing a scripts and all right i'll show you how you can uh, design the print kind some kind of a formatting whatever is required with the help of a printf in echo you cannot achieve all those things you can only plainly work with the string but some kind of a formatting output you need you need a some kind of a designing while outputting it then i can achieve with the help of a printf command okay guys okay now okay so now you have some more commands like printf echo there are some more commands like for example you have a tr command actually tr command or t command first we'll see the t command so now whenever if i execute the ls hyphen l i'll get a standard uh, i'll get a long listing of the python address you say that rajesh i want to print uh, the output to the screen the same output i want to read to some file so then i will say ls hyphen l pipe to t command specify the file name my file the output of ls will come to the screen the same output will be read to a file by name my file if you say ls can you see there is a file by name my file if you do a cat of my file can you see the output of so p command is using it is used to achieve both it is used to get the output to the screen the same output if you want to read to some other file then you have to use the t command very handy command most of the time in our day to day activity we will be using this key command clear sir okay now okay tr command basically tr command it is basically used uh for uh making the output from the lower case to the upper case like for example if you have a file see i have a file uh by name alice actually so alice is a file it has all lower case you say rajesh i want to print all the lower case to the upper case how to do it so i can say tr command okay small a to small z space i need from capital a to capital z from the file alice see you are making everything from the lower case to the upper case okay similarly from the upper case to lower case you have to do ulta from capital a to small capital b z to small a to small z and specify the file name you will get from all from lower case to upper case or upper case to lower case like that you can print it actually so tr command we call it as a translator command sir translator actually this also sometime we use uh, in our scripting or in our day to day activity but there is one more important usage of this command tr command so this basically this tr command it is also used for a tr command is also used for changing the file type from dos file to the unix file so there is a command by name dos to unix file dos to unix the file is not the command is not there or unix to dos nobody does from unix to dos but i'm just saying so for assume that actually sometime what happen you will try to copy some text file from windows to the linux okay that file will get copied to linux but that file type will be still it will be it will be a dos file only right for example if i do a uh, how i can do hmm, okay i will try to uh, install the unix to dos itself unix to dos uh, unix to dos package only will install let us see sir if it is there or not i don't know it should be there as per my understanding yeah it is there sir yeah dos to unix or unix to dos so both are same actually now i have an alice file sir this alice file it is actually a unix file actually or it's a linux file it's an ascii text file actually it's a unix file i can convert this uh, file from the unix to the dos actually how to do it unix uh, to dos specify the alice file see it is converting that alice file to the dos file see when i do an ls this alice file is a dos file now when i do a file on alice see it is saying that it is ending with a control line terminator okay when i do when i open that for alice see it you will not be knowing but this is a dos format sir actually so what happen usually when the unix system is computing the dos file right at the time it will show an error saying that because 
this file is ended with the control line l terminator so that's what if you see the file type right it is showing control line terminator at that case what happened right? you need to convert this file from the dos to the unix how to do it dos to unix you can convert the file see now you have converted the alice file back to the uh, from the dos to the back to the uh, to the unix format now if you execute file, file command now it changes as a text file right so now what i'm trying to tell that suppose assume that actually this command or this uh, command or this package is not installed in the system assume that actually uh, assume that whatever the file you got no whatever the file you got right this alice file this is a, this file is actually a dos file only this is a dos file suppose you copy it but you are feeling you are seeing some problem with this file now later you will get to know the oh man this is a dos file man i want to convert from the dos to the linux or dos to unix but you don't have a dos to unix command in your system because the package is not installed then how do you convert that file from dos to the unix machine, unix format then the tr command is used sir translator command is used so tr is also used to convert from the lower case to the upper case here how we did see how we did we are able to convert low as well as the same command is always is also used to uh, uh, to change the file from the dos to the unix also that is also used how to do that see uh, i think um, how to do that tr command to convert dos to unix I forgotten uh, the syntax actually it is tr something is there sir wait i will show you here itself is there so this is the command sir this is the command actually okay. tr remove remove from the alice file create the alice file now you see that file of alice one is as the file so in this way you are able to convert that file now what happened right this still this file exists actually so you can remove this file alice and you can rename this alice one back to alice like this you can do it. so that you are able to get your original file back to the you so this is a command this is also one of the inter question they ask what tr command use so it used for from converting the file what are the content it has from the lower case to the upper case fine is there any use of the command yes sir the command is also used to convert the file type from dos to unix type so that is also it is used actually okay sir clear sir any doubts you have no okay fine so today i think we will stop it here itself now sir because uh, we will be uh, getting into some more commands but in the next class maybe tomorrow i might take the class so we have to extensively understand uh, this two commands are very much this four commands this two anyhow we will be using in a day to day activity but this two commands are very important sir this two commands will uh, have a lot of uses in our scripting actually so that's what we have to do set and off this will be extensively i'll be explaining you in the next class maybe tomorrow night i might take the class actually okay so set and off is very important so we will see that once this is all done this command is all done few more commands are there like free hyphen m command yeah one more command i'll execute so free command free command basically it will show you the um, ram size actually free hyphen m if i execute free with hyphen m option it will show what is the ram size and what is the swap size so this command will show you always so this command is most of the time they'll ask in it to what is the command command which you used to show the ram size and swap size ram space or primary memory so free hyphen m command is the one which is used for it okay so this command so like that way there are many commands are there sir process related uh, commands like this like that uh, which i have not yet written here uh, ps command ps a command kill command wrap command okay and uh, what else there are many other command anyone is uh, remembering any other commands which we are uh, which we are not displayed here uh there are many commands are there sir if you say mount command and mount command io stat command like that vm stat command right lspci command okay like that ls ls cpu command there are many commands are there sir if you see that is never ending talk they are never ending so many commands are there 
so we will be slowly discussing one one by one whenever we are coming across with that, that particular context or the uh, particular topic right we will be exploring a lot of commands related to that topic okay and also there are many commands are there which are used to even view the thread what are the threads which are running within a process or how many threads are running that also we will be seeing later psf and elf 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 if you use no it will show you the threads also right sometime there might be recommend yeah we have even missed the top command top command head stop command so these are the some top command head stop command there are many commands are there so like this so we will be seeing all those commands in upcoming classes whenever it requires once this is completed sir this will be completed very soon so soon after that we need to get into the scripting that is our main motor actually so we will get into the scripting maybe in another one more class we will start getting the scripting actually so this is what the heart is okay we will be sending spending the scripting only for nearly for two to three sessions like two like minimum for like four hours we will be only spending on scripting only so in that uh, in that place right we need to put some effort in learning how to write a script actually so if we are succeeded here it means that we have in the we have in the war actually it means that we know most of things in the actually so this is our main motto sir learning scripting is the main challenging task what we have so that we'll be doing in our upcoming classes okay okay guys then uh, some of you can stop the session Yeah, Naresh or uh, Suresh, anyone can stop the session, sir.